Hey everyone, so in the readings this week, uh, we started uh, looking at some various texts that talk about uh, visual language, right? Talk about how we communicate with language, the different elements that are available to us as, uh, you know, visual communicators that let us express different ideas, um, different uh, you know, concepts, emotions sometimes, um, the way that things like color and space and structure uh, and rhythm and pattern all come into play when we're trying to convey a message visually. Now, um, most of you, like me, uh, have a, uh, a web page that in its code version looks something like this and in its uh, browser version looks something like this. And you'll probably agree with me that there doesn't seem to be <laughs> <laughs> a whole lot of visual communication going on here, right? Um, <clears throat> very, very basic. Um, so the first thing that we're going to talk about um, a, in a sort of uh, in a sort of basic way this week is we're going to start to talk about style. We can talk about the parts, uh, the the way that we can actually start to bring some of those visual elements to our web pages. Um, so the first thing that I want to to address is, you know, we started talking last week about markup, right? We talked about HTML. There's our nice little HTML declaration there um, that's telling the web browser that this page is indeed HTML. And if you guys were saving, uh, as you guys were saving your files, you also had to end them with .html, right? So that file extension, which is, you know, anything that comes after the dot in any file name, uh, is what explains to the web browser how it should interpret this file. Um, and in order to get, in order to create uh, visuals, you know, sort of compelling visuals, and also to create interactivity on the web, we actually need uh, sort of two more types of files, uh, two more types of languages, really, um, to uh, to get something that has both content and style and interactivity, or all three of those things. Um, and the two things that we need in addition to this HTML that we already have is we need something called CSS, which stands for Cascading Style Sheets and we need JavaScript. And so we're going to do just a, a sort of brief introduction to both of those this week, start talking about their structures um, and how they work together. So here is just a sort of quick overview of, I guess I could do this full screen, but then it'll look weird, um, of the, the pieces of a web page, okay? So basically we have a web page, which is this whole circle. CSS, cascading style sheets, is going to be what brings style, right? So this is how we're going to manipulate color and spacing and borders and alignment and all of that good stuff that lets us do that visual communication. HTML we've already touched on is, that's our visual structure, right? That's going to be the sort of building blocks, um, the containers, if you will, um, that we then apply styles to um, and put things inside of to organize them on our web page and have them be visible. Um, when that page renders um, in a browser. And then we have JavaScript, and JavaScript is what um, allows us to work with data and interactivity. Um, and so the first thing that we're going to look at this week is CSS. Um, and the thing that's nice about CSS is that basically we can, uh, and actually JavaScript and CSS and HTML can all live together on the same page inside a page that ends with .html. Um, and this is how people this is how people used to do it in the olden days, um, and we'll talk in class about why we don't tend to do it this way anymore, but just as an introduction, this is going to give us a sense of how these pieces fit together. So we've learned how to do a comment in HTML, which is always good. Um, so I'm going to start with that, again, just so I can tell myself what I'm intending to be up to here, and I'm going to say um, create a div uh, with different with red text inside it, okay? And as we mentioned briefly in class, and we're going to uh, discuss a little bit further this week, um, you know, uh, HTML is a special subset of XML, right? Anything that has this form, we looked at this sort of caret, name, close caret, and then how we have the forward slash before the, the second half of the tag. And I can put anything I want in here. Okay. Um, a div, and we'll look at a visual of this in just a minute, um, a div stands for division, and it's really just a box, okay? It's just an empty box, um, and actually it's invisible uh, and has no size uh, until we put something inside it. Um, and we can do things with CSS, like make the borders visible. That's one of the things we can do with CSS. But for now, you can just think of it as sort of an empty, an empty square. Um, they are always rectangulars, actually, uh, quadrilaterals, um, <clears throat> though we can make them look like they're not. 
So again, if I do this and I save this in my HTML file and I come back to, uh, you know, my, this is just on my local hard drive, right, because it starts with file. And I see, you know, there we go. I can put text in there. No big deal. Um, now, I want to do a little bit more than that. I want to start looking at something like styling. Um, I want to have some visual element to this. And the way that we can do this directly inside our div tag. So remember we talked about tags, which are the things surrounded with carrots and then attributes, right? And the attributes can only go in the beginning of the, in the first, in the opening tag, right? This first tag. And it's always the name of the attribute followed by an equal sign and then the value of the attribute sur surrounded by double quotes. Now, again, because we're in HTML, there are specific attributes that the page understands. And one of them is style. Okay, so when we talk about styling the page, we are very literally going to use a style attribute tag. And in this case, I am going to say that I want the color. Oops, okay. So color in HTML, or in CSS rather, uh, color actually affects the color of text. Uh, maybe not the most intuitive thing for some of us who would expect it to affect uh, background color, but in the very early days of the web, there weren't a lot of images. Um, there really wasn't a lot going on visually. It was mostly text, hopefully organized in a reasonably uh, uh, coherent fashion. And so uh, color affects text. Now, what this is followed by, so notice the structure here. We see color, colon, and then we see this, this string um, that's a pound, ff, and four zeros, followed by a semicolon. So I'm drawing your attention to this because we're going to see this pattern elsewhere. Um, this is a very common, uh, a very common sort of structure for things, um, uh, where we see sort of the name of something followed by a colon, and where we see things ended by a semicolon. Um, uh, this right here, the the pound sign followed by six uh, letters and numbers, is what we call a hexadecimal color code. Um, these are very easy to look up on the web, and you can find, and we'll provide you a bunch of resources for this. But anyhow, um, that's what that is. So I happen to know that FF followed by four zeros is kind of a very brazen red. Um, and so I saved my changes. Now I just want to note for you guys, in case this uh, wasn't clear, um, you see this in a lot of different types of files, but you notice that up here, see how there's an asterisk at the beginning of the file name? That means I have unsaved changes, okay? So if I just want to make sure that I have all my changes saved, so if I make a change, I want to save it. You can just use Control S or Apple S the way you would do for a Word file or anything else. Um, and that's how I know that when I reload my web page, I'm going to actually see those changes come up. So if I reload this, what do you know? The text is red, okay? So that's a very, very basic uh, you know, elementary thing to do. Um, and we'll go over a little bit more uh, of that in a minute. Um, but what I want to show you is there's, uh, if you want to sort of get familiar with the kinds of things that you can affect, okay, this is um, W3C, uh, it's W3 Schools, but it's run by the W3C, which is the World Wide Web Consortium, which is uh, the organization that uh, essentially decides uh, what uh, what browsers sh should understand. They sort of define the dictionary for the internet, if you will. Um, and this is going to tell us about all of the different things that we can manipulate. Okay, so background image, borders. So I'm going to add one more property just for kicks here. Um, so I can go ahead and uh, uh, I can say, now we talked about how in English we start a period, we start a sentence with a capital and end it with a period. In code, we almost always end it with a semicolon. So I have color. I've defined that. Now I'm going to do something else. I'm going to say border. Um, uh, let's see, border solid. Let's see what happens there. Maybe something. Maybe nothing. Whoops. Where did my web page go? Nope. Oh, there it is. Okay. So you can see that by adding elements to this, you know, by adding, so we've added color, we've added border, we can add any, anything we want from, um, from this reference page, this DSS reference page, to start manipulating uh, the, the way that that displays. And we can do things like set the width and the height. Um, we can set, you know, margins and padding and, and all kinds of other things. Um, but I want to leave that for now because I want us to start talking about um, uh, how we can add interactivity to this page. Um, 
so uh, we'll come back in a moment. We'll take a look at this, and we're going to start to look at um, just, uh, just a little bit of JavaScript and how JavaScript can be used to add interactivity. So I'll see you back here in a moment.